The following fight takes place in the PFL Europe Lightweight Division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. He is an MMA specialist and stands six feet tall. He weighed in officially at 155 pounds and holds a professional record of five victories and three defeats. Fighting out of Bathgate, Scotland, Dylan the Nuke Took! <laughs> and his opponent fighting out of the red corner. He is a striking specialist and stands 5 feet 11 inches tall. He weighed in officially at 155 and 1 half pounds and holds a perfect professional record of seven wins and no losses. Fighting out of Liverpool, England, Connor Hughes! Your referee judge, Thomas Bronner. Three five-minute rounds with a trip to Paris on the line. Both of these men trying to keep the dream of the PFL European Championship and a $100,000 prize alive. Now, the challenge early for Connor Hughes is to try and figure out this movement of Dylan Took. It's easier to defeat him when he's pushing forward aggressively, but this is what we're talking about. He's been put together again by these coaches. They, they've controlled him. They've pulled him out of that chaos a little bit so he can still be as effective, but not quite be as vulnerable. Southpaw stance and the or unorthodox movement for Took in the gray. Hughes is in the green trunks. A lot of feints from, from, from Took so far. I like what Hughes is doing. He's not really biting. He's showing that sidekick to, to Took. Kickboxing world champion, Connor Hughes. Very controlled at this range, very measured. Lifelong mixed martial art artist. Absolutely. As for his entire family. They put a gi on him when he was born. <laughs> that right. I like that sidekick. Yeah, that's cool. It's a great way to deal with those feints. Hughes is waiting for the right moment to counter one of those feints. Trying to get a read. Dan thought it was really interesting the way in, in that last word, these guys talking back and forth and addressing the fact Connor Hughes is undefeated, Took has some losses. And the value of lessons learned in a loss. And also, you, you, you have to acknowledge that the, the level of competition that Dylan Took has lost to. I mean, Sadiq Yusuf is a very highly thought of fighter who's now in the UFC. He, he's just jumped at opportunities that have been put in front of him, whereas Connor Hughes, he came through a solid amateur career and learned some lessons there. He wasn't undefeated as an amateur, but when he turned professional, it was like, right, okay. And, oh, that was a nice straight left from Dylan Took, lunged into range. Beautiful way to land uh, off all his movement. Finally paying off all those feints. I think Dylan Took's trying to play into some frustration here. He's trying to get, get Connor to lunge forward. Look, hands are down now. He's starting to walk. Not even looking at the opponent, just jogging around the outside of the cage here. And I think you're absolutely right, Dan Hardy, because <laughs> this would, this does frustrate a fighter who wants to be in the pocket and throwing. <laughs> Can he keep this up for three rounds, though? Smile on the face of Connor Hughes there. <laughs> Thing is, at some point, Hughes is going to overcommit, and that's going to make it much easier for Took to level change and take him down, because ultimately, I feel like that's what Took wants to do in this fight. At some point, he's just not being rushed about it and allowing Connor Hughes to defend those takedowns easy. I am curious about that strategy as well, if that is indeed the game plan from the Scottish camp. <laughs> Two with three submission victories in his career. Connor Hughes with four submission victories in his career to go with a couple of knockouts as well. Staying calm for Connor Hughes right now is going to be very difficult. Connor's got to be aware of that left kick as well. He's going high into the body with it. Very easy for something like that to sneak through the guard and do some damage. 
especially Chu because the liver's open on that side, Story said. Chu gets showed it a couple times, but he hasn't thrown it full power or full speed, so he could surprise Hughes with it when he throws it faster. That's another one of those things, if he keeps throwing through the body, that's going to try and suck Connor Hughes into maybe catching that kick, reaching for it in a desperation attempt to create some action. Again, this is, it feels all very calculated for Dylan, too. And there's the high kick attempt again. And you can, you can stay in calm, but if he's doing this for three rounds, he's losing the fight. So at a certain point, he's got to step it up, and he's got to have to commit more to his, to his strikes. That's exactly what the news wants. Ooh, nice chance snuck through there for Dylan too. Whose unorthodox movement has really dictated the way this fight is happening in round number one. Oh, beautiful! And the left eye is immediately swelling up. Connor oh. Hughes through the heel. Hook kick. Wow. And now they're talking back and forth. He's having to reach deep into the old toolbox, pull out the hook kick. Oh, the blood God. pours from his nose. Yeah, it's from the, <laughs> the first left hand that uh, Chu landed. That beautiful short left hand. There's the belt for round number one. Very, very interesting. I love how Chu moves backwards after his actions. Out of danger. Here's the hook kick from I Hughes. love that kick. Beautiful. So what we know is Hughes needs to change something, because else he's going to lose the second round again. We know what Tug is going to do. He's going to do the exact same thing. More aggression from Hughes already. Coming forward. That little sliding side kick's a really nice technique. Hughes is already standing more athletic, more bent in his knees to explode. Take down a 10 from Tug. And you heard the cue from the corner. I think it was Stevie Ray in the corner that said, when you're ready, Dylan, when you're ready for this, a takedown attempt. Great timing on that. Leg battle going on here at the moment. Chuk trying to get a wrap on that left leg of, of Hughes. Hughes trying to keep it clear and trying to do something with those overhooks, even though that position is not ideal for him. Double underhooks for, Tilla, uh, for Dylan too. Oh, beautiful knee there. Sent that knee right up over the shoulder of Connor Hughes. Very quick. Good separation here from Hughes. Over a minute gone in the second round. I think Chug's very happy with how this fight's going so far. So we're going to see Hughes taking some more risks now. You can see him starting to jog forward a little bit. And confirming what Dan Hardy thought about the strategy, you can hear the corner of Dylan Took trying to draw Connor to sing. When he commits, they want him to go underneath for another takedown attempt. You know, and the laughing and smiling is all a part of this tactic as well. See, now Connor Hughes is not smiling back at him. He's not playful anymore. Now he's, oh, that was a beautiful left hand again. Beautiful takedown from two. Use the body lock. Used his right knee to stop the legs of Connor Hughes. And this is where we end up. He's got the back. Trying to go around that leg from Hughes again. If he can't take him down, he can burn the clock. Because so far, oh, wow, two hooks in. Nice back take here. Yes, there. And here's the body lock. Body triangle from Dylan Took. And he's going to work that nose from the back, which is already sensitive. And the body triangle is locked in on the top side as well, which makes it much easier to control and keep. And no room on that far side because of the fence for Connor Hughes to roll over and put the pressure on what for him is the correct side. And one thing I'm going to draw your attention to, we've got Stevie Ray in the corner, the Scottish twister himself. <laughs> we need to be aware of what's going on here because uh, you know Dylan Took has picked up that technique from Stevie Ray. Even though he's working on this rear naked choke right now, we know he's got that Scottish twister in his back pocket as well. And here it is. Look, yep. that's 
when he takes that right leg and sends it to the, puts his instep on the far, behind the far knee of Connor Hughes, that's what that's setting up. He is allowing him to turn in. Very, very interesting. This is that leg position I'm talking about. If Connor Hughes isn't careful and he tries to turn his body too aggressively toward Dylan Took to turn and face. Good job from Hughes there. Nice work by Hughes. Great job from Took though. Took just ran right around, got back on the back. It's the best version of Dylan Took I've ever seen, I've got to tell you. I, you know, his fights are always a lot of fun, but there's, a, there's an, a level of crazy that sometimes makes him vulnerable, which we're not seeing right now. This is very, very measured by him. Yeah, a lot of people question him. You know, you look at his record, five wins, three losses, three knockout losses, but by far the best performance from Dylan Took so far in his career. And if anyone wants to see how tough Dylan Took is, watch his fight against uh, against Adam Ventry. He was dropped, he was hurt in that fight, and still came back to turn it around. He's looking for a wrist right here. Trying to get a hold of the, the arm that Hughes is posturing on, but... 30 seconds left, another good round for Dylan Took. He's very smooth on the ground, he's barely using any energy. Just smothering pressure here, always staying heavy, making Connor Hughes react to what he is doing in the wrestling. Now with the striking, final 10 seconds of round number two. All Dylan Took in the second frame. Two rounds in the pocket for Dylan Took. There's the bell for round number two. His opponent will be in Paris. Go show of sportsmanship there. Connor Hughes in the green, Dylan Took in the gray. Third and final round. Yeah, talking to both of these guys, they're both aware that if they were in the same gym as training partners, they would be really, really good friends. But they keep this barrier up against one another. Now you saw it just come down a second at the start of the third round there. That appreciation for one another. But then straight back to the game plan for, uh, for Dylan Took. On his bike, moving laterally, stinging his opponent. He was trying to get into that right range and freeze the feet of Dylan Took, but Took refuses to stay still. I'd like to see Connor Hughes work the legs a little more at Dylan Took, try and take some of this footwork away from him. One or two calf kicks could change this fight a lot, but again, with, with third round now, he's got to work fast. Oh, very fast with that left hand, Dylan Took. Beautiful bump off the, off the rear foot just to fire him across the center line and throw that left hand out. And every time, sorry Dan, every time Connor Hughes plants his feet to try and turn on a powerful punch, Took just takes that as his cue to change levels, to grab a hold, and to create this exact situation right here. Great game planning, really fantastic work, doing their research, understanding how to get into the game of an undefeated fighter like Connor Hughes. This is the work of James Doolin and, uh, and Stevie Ray in the corner. Beautiful takedown, again from Dylan Took. Love how he's attacking the, the legs when he's got a body lock. And, and you can see that the long limbs of Dylan Took allow him to do this very readily. Grab that body triangle. And that just saps your ability to breathe. Defend yourself. You can stay here all day, Dylan Took. Hughes turning to the side where put that foot flat on the mat. There's Stevie Ray. There we go. Stay on the choke and arm fight. And you guys know what it's like. He's got it. It's, it's, it's very tight. That looks like it's just across the ready. face, just but he's still in a squeeze for it. Just to be feel still get it. Slow exhale, exhale, exhale. I'm lucky. Perfect takeaway. Go in up, Dylan. Beautiful work. I think I'd be tempted to work across the nose if I'd already done that kind of damage to my opponent. You can see him tapping at the nose, which is going to be really sensitive right now. You've got to be so frustrated, undefeated, and he just can't get a hold of, of two on the feet. Well, it's, a, it's a nightmare kind of fight when you're being smothered in these ground exchanges, and even when you do get back to the feet, an opponent is so elusive that you, you can't mount any meaningful offense. It's one thing 
to feel like your opponent is landing and doing damage to you, but if you can't do anything to them, it takes away everything. Dylan Took with an exclamation of his own. <laughs> He's having a good time in there. <laughs> He's telling him you just wouldn't listen. <laughs> Referee admonishing Took for some colorful language there. Keeps diving for that rear naked choke every time. Connor Hughes is tucking his chin, but then he's dealing with the pressure across his nose. Less than 90 seconds now to go. I wonder if we're going to see some desperation here from Hughes, which is going to try and force turn into the guard of Dylan Took and get caught in that Scottish twister again. I'm still watching for that right foot of Dylan Took to wander across the centre line and hook the far side knee. It'll be interesting to know what Jakob Kasuba is making of this performance. How he's going to get his hands on him. Good job from Took, staying active, giving the referee not even a chance to think about standing them up, burning the clock, being dangerous, still looking for submissions. 30 seconds. Completely shut down Connor Hughes. What a performance. Cl clearly the best performance of Dylan Took's career. Yeah, clearly. talk about surprises. Mm -hmm. Big surprise for me that Took has taken out Connor Hughes the way he's doing here tonight. A previously undefeated Connor Hughes came into this fight in the minds of most as a favorite over Dylan Took. One final right hand from Dylan Took and we'll go to the judges' scorecard. There's Jakob Kashuba, who now has an answer to at least one question. I don't think there'll be a big surprise when we hear these judges' scorecards, but Andy Shepard will let us know now. After three rounds of action, we go to the judges' scorecards. All three judges scored about 29 to 28. Declaring your winner by unanimous decision and booking their place in the PFL Europe playoffs. Dylan Two! What round did they give him? ecstatic at the idea of progressing September 30th. We're going to see him in Paris. We're going to see him interviewed by Sean O'Connell right now, and then we're going to bring his opponents for September into the smart cage with him to face them off. All right, here inside the smart cage, Dylan Took. One-way traffic, pretty dominant performance. We saw the crazy movement in round number one, and then... In rounds two and three, you took it to the ground. Was that always the game plan? Yeah, I have the best team in the world at higher level and the best coach in the world, James Dillon. He just told me to, if I move and if I'm smart, I can beat anyone in the world. I'm, I'm honestly a world beater. Uh, yeah, I'm so fucking happy. <laughs> Sorry, <Dad. laughs> We see you get on his back, working for the rear naked choke, and then I saw maybe that right, le right leg coming over as he was maybe going to twist that back That Scottish here. twister. Were you looking for that Scottish twister a la Stevie Ray? Stevie was trying to go over with me in the back, but I'm a bit stupid, so I was like, I'm just going to go for the choke. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, that's uh, that's his move, the Scottish twister. And uh, I'm just blessed to have him over here. He took time away from his family uh, after going back to back to back to back camps in the USA. And I want to emulate my big brother now and go over to the USA and scalp them Yanks. All right, let's, uh, let's bring in, we already know. Dylan Took advances to the PFL playoffs for Europe in Paris. Jakob Kasuba did the same thing just moments ago. <laughs> what was that, Jakob? I did it in one round. <laughs> he did it in one round. Not against a top level round, Gavin, Gavin, don't joking, dick. Look here, you little kid. 
You ran like your two front teeth. And you couldn't catch me, bitch. You couldn't catch me, you stiff bitch. I thought you were taller. I am taller, and you're lucky, you big beak. You'll see now what tells me. I can drink hot chocolate over your dead body. I can't even understand you. Good, you're an idiot. Look here, a little midget. God, you can you understand me? Yeah, because I can understand you, bitch. You understand that, do you? You're one of Peach guy, peach guy. You understand that, peach guy? You learned all this. No, could have had. Could have had my chick. Well, I feel... I'm seeing you can't talk. Let's just do a stadium. <laughs> this will be the matchup in Paris. Jakob Kasuba, Dylan took with a trip to the PFL Europe final on the line. Well done, fellas. <laughs>